good afternoon, all. I, I probably shouldn't say anything, but uh, I've been standing here for several minutes now, waiting for a car alarm to go off, or to shut off, and I'm thinking, whose alarm is going off? And then I walked around to look, and it was my truck. <laughs> Apparently, I hit the button in my uh, pocket here, and set the alarm off. Okay, back to what we're supposed to be doing. Today, we're going to be talking about the, I've decided to do a, a series, I don't know if you're going to call it a series, but I'm going to do some videos on moving boulders. And today, we got a storm coming in. I'm kind of crammed into the corner right here because of the wind, but I want to discuss the gear requirements there's not a lot but there is some stuff that we need to talk about before we move boulders so we're going to jump right into it let's talk about the different stuff we're going to need to take up in the hills to move boulders we'll start at the back end and that would be your anchor point okay Myself, I prefer using straps as an anchor point. You can use cable as an anchor point, but let's, let's talk about the straps first. Okay, the reason why I like straps, number one, they're light as a feather. They're all rated, and they come in all different lengths. You can put a lot of strap in a backpack. Now, strap has the same problem that rope does. Once it gets a nick in it, it's no longer at this rating. You don't know what it is. These straps, I'll show you one here. This strap, you can see right here, it's got a cut in it. That's why this strap is in with my uh, power, my boulder pulling stuff and not on the job. Once a strap gets any kind of a nick or anything in it, as far as work goes, I can no longer use it. You can't pick something up with a crane with this strap. Uh, you get somebody killed at doing that. But as far as pulling rocks, okay, I know, because I can look right here, and it tells me that this thing set up in, in a basket is an, what they call just a U-shape, will pick up 6,400 pounds. Okay. I know this can't pick up 6,400 pounds. So I know if I take this strap, double it up, okay, I got a 6,000 pound strap. I can use this strap with this nick in it, and I know I still got 1,000, 2,000 pounds worth of strap. So this is still safe to use with a come along. I would never use this strap if I was using a, like a chainsaw winch or a hydraulic winch. With hand equipment, this is still good to use. Now you can get these at flea markets and such, just make sure that they got some kind of rating so you know where you're at. Okay, then the other thing you can use uh, and if you're anchoring to a tree, I prefer a nice big wide strap. That way you just wrap this around the tree and you don't have to worry about hurting the tree where if you use a cable, you can cut into that tree and basically kill it, you'll girdle the tree. Now, if you want to use cable, if you're pulling with a lot of, lot of power and you want to use cable on a tree, what we do is we cut either oak or maple, they're both good, wooden slats about you know one inch by one inch and we'll lay them down on duct tape 
and wrap them around the tree and then rack duct tape to hold it and then we wrap the cable around that so it's pulling on those wooden slats and not cutting into the tree. And cable's the same thing as the straps. Cable is rated. So you can run two strands of cable around the tree, bind it, and pull off of that, and you got a pretty good anchor point. But like I say, dragging cable down the hill is a lot heavier than dragging strap down the hill. The reason I stress you know, making sure you've got a good solid anchor point is when you're pulling a rock, you're going to be concentrating on the rock. You're going to be running the power pull right here, not looking behind you. You're going to be looking at the rock. If that, if it fails behind you, you can get hurt because you're not going to see it coming. Okay, the next thing in our lineup would be your power source. And now your power source can be you. Um, a boulder is much easier to move with a handle on it. So if you wrap a chain around a boulder and just pull on that chain, you'd be surprised the size of a boulder you can pull around because the boulder itself may only be 150, 200 pounds, but they're extremely hard to pick up because there's no handle on them. Well, if you put a chain on it, you can drag them around pretty easy, especially if you got two guys. You take a uh, little short chain, hook it on the other side, and two of you can pull it around. Okay, the next thing, as far as a power source goes, is your power pole. Now, this one here is rated at one ton. Okay, when it comes to your come along, your power pull, they got all kinds of different names. I think power pull is a brand name. But you want to buy a good US made one. Do not get a Chinese one, they're junk. Um, I've seen them where the, the wheel is just tore right out, you'll break the teeth off, the handles will break. I mean, they're junk. Uh, the, you know, the, the best thing is you're just going to lose some money. The worst thing is you're going to get hurt trying to pull boulders with a cheap come along. So go ahead and spend, uh, I don't know what they cost now, 40, 50 bucks. You know, I've had this one for 20 years. Um, now this one, I'll show you the, that's who makes it and it's made in the USA. Now, I don't know if this company is still in business or not. Like I said, I've had this for 20 years. Uh, but I can't emphasize this enough. Get a good one. Um, don't go all the work and the trouble and everything else to get down there and have a cheap Chinese one break on you. Okay, this one, like I say, is rated 1,000 pounds. You can hook it onto itself and put a snatch block in it, which will double your pull. Um, the beauty of these is they, you know, they're pretty darn light. They don't take much room and you can pull a heck of a rock with them. From the come along to the boulder. Now, if you're close enough, you can just stretch the cable out, hook it right on the boulder. If you're not close enough, you have to either use a strap, a chain, or a cable. I prefer a cable uh, because a cable's not going to give you a catastrophic failure. Uh, before a cable breaks, you'll see it splinter. It will start twisting and you'll see it coming apart and it'll give you time to get the heck out of there. Uh, now, there's several different ways you can use a cable. They're a little more difficult to use. Um, this is what they call a cable grab. This, you open it up, you slide your cable in there, it closes, and then when you pull on it, it 
grab the cable even tighter so you can if you have your your power source a hundred feet from where you're pulling your boulder you can stretch out the cable on your come along hook it on here pull it and then you can open this up slide this down the cable as you stretch out your cable on the come along and just keep pulling on the same cable you don't have to re-rig all you got to do is just slide this down the cable um, if you're not far from the the source you can just use other chains which is what i do most of the time i try to get my my power source close to where i'm pulling okay well that gets us to the chain okay when it comes to chains i think there's five different ratings on chains it goes at 30 don't ask me why but it goes 43 50 60 70 uh, but basically everybody goes a three four five six what they call a g3 or a g4 okay i have all the chain i use with the come along is 5 16th chain um it's heavy enough to take the abuse and it won't break on you and it's you know a lot lighter than carrying a 3 8 chain around okay i have two different grades here okay this chain is what they call a g4 this one's a g3 or this one's a 30 this one's a 40. uh you can actually see the difference in the chains let me show you okay these are both 5 16 chains this chain is a 30 and you can tell by looking at it it's not as uniform as this chain these have both been used the same amount but you can see that this chain doesn't have any bends or dinks or anything in it where this chain looks like it's beat to death okay the reason for that is the 40 is your lowest high tensile strength chain the 30 is not a high tensile strength and this is as good a chain as you want to use um, the problem is when you get into the high tensile strength uh, this chain is not rated i can't i can't use this on the job to lift something overhead with a crane it's not allowed because this isn't a good enough chain but you don't want a better chain than this because the the better chain you get they don't stretch they get harder and harder and stronger and stronger the problem is you want your chain you want this to be the point that fails in your setup because this is what you're going to be looking at when you're winching you're going to be looking right at your boulder right at your chain so this is what you want to fail when you're working to come along and you can see that boulder is no longer moving but you're still pulling in cable you know if you've got a good anchor point you know that this chain is stretching and it's going to break that gives you the opportunity to stop and go whoa wait a minute something ain't right to where if you have a good chain and you just keep putting pressure on it that chain may just explode it may just catastrophically fail and then you got stuff flying everywhere so you want a cheap chain you know you don't want to get the crummy big welded things that you know they're, they're not even going to work the first time you want to get a good 30 chain um like i say it will stretch now the problem with these is as they stretch and as they get hammered they get to where they're not so flexible now i have spent the winter with a punch trying to straighten these out widen the loops up so i can get another year out of them and after a while these things will become stiff as a board you can't even bend them uh, but you won't get hurt with them 
when they break, it's kind of an easy break. It'll just pop, stretch, and release, and your, your rigging won't come flying back at you. It'll just fall on the ground to where if you have a catastrophic failure, you got rigging flying and somebody's gonna get hurt. I try to get several different lengths of chain. This chain is my longest chain I take and this is 15 foot. Now, we're talking about just using a come along. So you don't need a chain any longer than this because a rock that this chain can't go around, a come along is not going to move it. Um, but you want smaller chains like this one here. I take this one, then I go down to this one. Now, the uh, last thing you're going to absolutely have to have, and that is extra hooks because you never know what you want to hook to what and you're going to need if I can find them you're going to need clevises now clevises are just super strong um, this little bitty one right here this will handle anything you can do with a come along so you know this is as big as i take in the field just because these are kind of hard to get a lot of strap into and stuff like that if you're going to double your strap up you got to have enough room to get all the strap in here now the reason why you have to have these is you never tie a strap to a strap you never go around, hook it on like this, and pull it tight because number one, it will destroy the strap. Number two, the odds are you'll never get them apart. So when you're hooking two straps together, you got to put a clevis in between and you just hook it on there. You hook the other strap in there I'll just use the, the other end. You hook the other end in there, tighten your clevis down, and that's how you hook two straps together. You never lock them into each other. And what I'm thinking about it is you never tighten a clevis. You run them down to where they stop, then you just Pop it just a hair so it's loose. You never cinch them down tight because if your strap rolls on there, it can over tighten it and the same thing, you'll never get it open. The last thing I can think of is you want to make sure that the hooks you use have, they're able to fit pull the pin out you want them so they'll fit all your chain so you can each hook you don't want to have a little tiny hook on one that won't fit on another chain and you want to make sure all your hooks have pins in them with uh, carter keys so you can pop them off really easy if you got to shorten it if you got to bring it up and use it in a different spot if you have a chain break you can just pop this off, put it on the, on the chain where it broke, and you still got a chain. Uh, you don't want the ones that are, that are uh, hammered on, where they, got the, uh, they just put like a, a rivet to hammer them on there. Or you don't want ones that are bolted on there because you may not have the wrenches to undo them. On your hooks, you want to make sure you use a carter key or a locking pin. To, to hold that in there. Now, preferably a carter pin because a carter key because these locking pins, this thing's going to be under a boulder, it's going to be drug around, and these will get pulled out and you won't be able to find it. So if you're going to use these, 
which make it a lot easier to, to move hooks around because you don't need pliers, you better bring a bunch of extras with you. Where a carter key, they just get smashed. Problem with a carter key is you got to have a pair of pliers to get them straight again to get them out. But it doesn't hurt to take a couple extra carter keys with you also. Okay, well that's pretty much a quick, kind of a basic what you're going to need. And it's like anything else. You can keep adding stuff to it until you fill a pickup truck. But I'm talking about what the average guy going out on the weekend wants to move a rock this big out of his way. This will work really good. Now, the only other thing I would suggest, like anything else, find a backpack. Doesn't that be a good backpack, but it's got to be kind of tough. I use my old wore out regular backpacks. And you want to put everything in your backpack. Make sure you have extra carter keys in there, throw a pair of pliers in there, a screwdriver in there, uh, all your stuff, so that when you're in a situation you need to, to move a boulder, all you got to do is try to remember where you left that backpack instead of running all over the place trying to gather all the pieces and it's guaranteed you're going to forget the, the pair of pliers or you're going to forget the clevis rings. So it's best to have everything together in a pack. That way when you need it, you're ready to go. Okay, well that's pretty much all I got on this one. I'm out of here. You guys have a wonderful day.